Father, we thank you for this wonderful time that we get to have. Lord, your presence is everywhere. So we thank you for being in your presence and for this, this meeting, God, that we get to have. I pray that you'll bless this time and that you just let your precious will be done in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for making time for this today. Absolutely. All right, first question. Can you please tell me everything you do in ministry? For sure. Um, so I'll start with probably the most obvious one, piano. Um, everybody here probably watching knows that. Um, yeah, I, I play piano for whatever I'm asked for. Um, most of the time that's been uh, youth camps, family camps, and HYCs. Um, I play at our church, ALF, um, and I just kind of do whatever's needed. You know, I sing or I'll play drums um, or I'll be on sound mm -hmm. occasionally. Um, and I'm also on the cleaning ministry. Um, that is more occasional as well, but uh, that's, I'd say that's pretty much everything. That's amazing how you do all that stuff. And cleaning ministry is very important too, even though some people may see it as not important. Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. Keeping up with the house of God is incredibly important. Making sure it's nice and clean because without the cleaning ministry, the house of God won't be clean. It would be pretty dirty. Yep. And no one wants to go to a dirty house. Absolutely right. not. That's true. Next question. Can you please tell me how you started in your ministry? Absolutely. So um, this is actually a few years back. I was probably about, I want to say, I want to say I was about nine or 10. Um, my dad used to pastor out in Delta Junction. Um, it was actually the church, the exact same building that my great grandpa Carnley used to pastor. And um, the way it started, really, um, was I had a snare, a hi-hat, and a kick, and I just played drums um, over in Delta. You know, I had somebody right next to me helping me keep time, and um, that's pretty much where my ministry started, was just at a little drum set over at a church in Delta. Um, from there, I kind of took that back to AOF and started playing in church. Um, I started with drums. I knew piano. Um, and then I think within the next year or two, I started playing piano, uh, in church. My first service actually was at a, oh man, it was at a, I think it was our first, uh, youth service that I played at. It was actually, I think the first United, which I believe was in 2018. So that's that's kind of where my ministry started. You know, I didn't really um, I didn't really just wait for a call. And that's that's something that, you know, if people are waiting on a call, you know, don't just wait on a call, you know, jump in, get into ministry, you know, do whatever you can do. You know, church maintenance, cleaning, uh, praise team, uh, sound team. I mean, it, it could be anything, you know, Bible studies, Sunday school teaching. It's all important to the kingdom of God. Um, so don't, don't just wait for ministry to call you, you know, to go to ministry, but that's back to that. That's pretty much where ministry started for me. It was just a little drum set out in Delta. That's an amazing testimony. I like how you pointed out Bible studies, because just starting a Bible study is so important because that's the way to win souls and we need to win souls. So I really like Absolutely. how you, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Anything else you'd like to add on that? No, ma'am. I think I think that's it. Right. Let's move on to the next question. What are your views on social media? Social media. <clears throat> so the way I kind of look at it, it can be a good thing and a bad thing. I just look at it as kind of like a tool, almost. Um. It, it can be used for certain things like it's what it was intended for. Um, 
you know, connecting with other people and, you know, just seeing on stories and posts where everybody's at throughout the world, you know, what they're up to. And I think, I think it's a good thing for sure in the sense of, you know, connecting with other people and um, things like that. But it can also be a bad thing, as we all know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the saying too much of a good thing is still too much. I think, you know, that's true in any case. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you know, it can be it can be addictive. That's definitely something that we struggle with in our generation is addiction and i i can say for sure i'll be transparent i've dealt with that you know um and it's an easy thing you know not just social media but all entertainment but it's so easy to just keep scrolling and keep scrolling and keep scrolling and keep scrolling um but like i said i do think it can be a good thing connecting with other people and um it's just it's really about discipline I think that really plays a big part in it. If you just you just really cut back on how much you use it. It's really I think it's just about how much you use social media. If you just keep your time limited really on that and just anything, you know, I think it'll be okay. But that's it's it's good and it's bad. So it just it just all depends on how much you use it and really what you use it for. That's so true. It's all about the balance. You got to try and stay on the good side, even though sometimes you may be like, wait, I got to scroll through Instagram and I can't stop scrolling because you're so addicted to it. How do you uh, do discipline in your life with social media? <sighs> um, that's, that's a tough question. That's a good question, though. Um, a lot of the time I actually find myself not on social media. Um, but sometimes like if I, if I get on it, whenever I'm bored, sometimes I'll get on it a little too much, but. Um, it's, it's hard for me to answer just cause I don't really, like I said, I, I find myself not on social media most of the time. Um, but I would say some ways you could set some time limits you know say say like 30 minutes you get to scroll or um you know just check like pretty much what i'll do is i'll just get on instagram and i'll check everybody's stories you know i'll get through all those see if there's any posts check my my uh my dms uh and then i'm most of the time i'm off mm -hmm. sometimes though if i'm if I got wait time or if i'm bored I'll scroll on reels, um, but I just keep it very limited. So most of the time I'm not even on it. So you could really just limit yourself on either time or just like what you do. So maybe just this day or this time, don't scroll as much or don't scroll at all. Mm -hmm. Just check the stories and then get off or, you know, maybe just even take a whole day and just fast social media. That's a good way to really put it into, you know, get it under control. And just, so I, I can't I can't really say that I have ways that I do discipline that. Yeah. Um, uh, like I said, because I'm not on it much, but I think that those could be some good ways to really get it under control. Fasting especially. Yeah, and you can even fast through social media. Like you can say, okay, this day I'm not doing social media. I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to read my Bible. I'm just going to do all the other stuff I need to do. And sometimes I noticed because there was a day last week, as you know, because we were going to do this meeting last week, but then internet went out. I noticed mm -hmm. how much free time I had because I was like, I can do this and I can do that. Like I have so much free time not going on my phone because a lot of the time you're just like, ooh, look at that. Look at that. I got to check that out. Yeah, absolutely. It It really is incredible how much time you have whenever you just put that away and you don't realize until you lose it once you don't have internet you're like wait I have time now to do all this yeah so true so true all right next question what is your view on fasting that's a big subject um all right 
I'll just go ahead and start. Um, so fasting, I think there's a lot of different views that people have on fasting. Um, the way I look at it most of the time is just as um, fasting really just being a way to get your flesh under control. Um, and that's that's why we fast food. That's, that's one of the more common ones in social media or entertainment. Um, because food, everybody eats food. Everybody likes food. It's, it's, it's a necessity for us to live. And so that's, that's why that's one of those things, because we sacrifice something to get closer to God. That's what fasting is for. And it's really, it's not just food. It's whatever, whatever you, whatever you need to fast. Like for me, a lot of the time it would be video games as I'm a big gamer and I'm sure uh, there's a lot of people out there, you know, even watching this that are, um, I take like today actually is one of my, my days for entertainment. Um, I take the whole day pretty much until, and uh, no, no entertainment of any kind. If I listen to anything, it'll be um, like apostolic music or preaching or just even the word um but going back to that um yeah that's 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 really that's how i look at it it's just a way to get your flesh under control because flesh is really one of the things we deal with the most it's not even you know yes the devil's over here yes he messes with us and all sorts of stuff does but that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is our flesh because that's, you know, it's always trying to get us off track or pull us over here because we go, ooh, social media, ooh, this uh, this food looks good. You know, it's it just tries to pull us this way and that. And so that's why, you know, it's a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. Keeping flesh under control is not an easy thing. And I can't even say that I have a control over it, but that's why we fast. And um, fasting really like a lot of people think they need to do the, the 21 day fast, those huge fasts, you know, and then they'll be all spiritual, but no, that's, you don't have to do that. And actually it's, I talked to uh, my pastor about three years ago and he told me that even 21 day fasts actually aren't good for your health. That he, that he heard of, a few men of God that went on those fasts and something up here just went wrong because they did just water and no food. So it's, it's not even healthy to do that. Not saying that you can't, but you don't need to do a 21 day fast because if you, my pastor explained it this way. If you do a one, one day a week, that's 52 days in a year that you fasted. And that's more, that's more than double a 21 day fast in one year. So it's, it's really just all about consistency. You know, you fast at least one day a week and then you can, you can take that into two or three if you want. I, I do two. I do, um, like I said earlier, I do no, no entertainment on Mondays. Um, I was for a while doing the Jewish fast, which is um, dinner to dinner. So I was doing Wednesday night to Thursday night. Um, but because of work, uh, I've had to switch that. So now I do Saturday to Sunday till like after church. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really just about consistency and that's, you know, get your flesh under control and fasting is not an easy thing. That's, that's absolutely one thing that just needs to be said. Fasting is not easy. Otherwise, everybody would do it. But, you know, I, I know the, my, my great grandpa currently actually used to say, um, if you live for God easy, it's hard. But if you live for God hard, it's easy. So it's, it's just really, it's just about what you're hungry for. You know, what, what are you willing to give up? What are you willing to sacrifice in order to get more of God?
That's so true. You just got to sacrifice more and more, even though you may be like, I want that food, but I know I should be on a fast right now, but I want the food. Or you're like, I want my phone, for example, but I should fast. For some ways that help you stay away from video games on Mondays. What are some ways? Yeah. Um, I'll definitely say one thing. Uh, do occupy yourself with something else. You know, um, I actually do work on Mondays. So um, that that does help a bit. And I didn't I didn't choose that day, you know, because I know because I know that I work and that distracts me. Um, but that's just that's just how it happens. You know, sometimes you just have to do things on your fast day. Sometimes you don't have anything going on in your fast day and that makes it tougher. But like I said, just occupy yourself with something, you know, maybe try and go hang out with your friends or go, go study, go spend time with the Lord, uh, clean, just something. Um, and a, another thing also that I think could help is um, my dad would always tell me, because um, like when I first started getting into fasting, um, he would say, uh, or I, I would say, to him dad I'm, I'm so hungry like <laughs> I want food so bad you know and I'm I'm maybe halfway through my day um and he would always tell me that um a man of God I believe named brother Jason Cisco, uh told him how he would deal with fasting and whenever we, he would get hungry um brother Cisco would would um he would quote this scripture I think it's Oh, I can't remember the scripture, but I can't remember where it's found, but I remember the scripture. It's looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So anytime he would get hungry, he would just quote that until he wasn't hungry anymore. And um, that's that's something I use uh, mostly for food, but I think that it really can just be in any case, you know. Um, if you're fasting games or just entertainment, you know, if you ever start to think about it, you know, just quote that verse. Or, and, and whatever you think about, whatever, you know, you strengthen what you're focused on. So if you're focusing on food or you're focusing on a video game, you're just going to make that worse for you. And the whole point of a fast is to give that up. So that's that that is a couple of things you could do. Um, yeah, I, I can't remember where that verse is found. I want to say. I want to say somewhere in Philippians, but I'm not entirely sure. That's all right. As long as you know how to quote the verse, that's important. To know how to quote verses right that you're pretty good at now since you've been in bible quizzing for a few years uh well actually i really just did the one year but um yeah i've had to learn i've had to learn and memorize verses for a few years not uh, you know outside of bible quizzing yeah. but yeah definitely yeah, i'm okay at it yeah, i remember in sunday school my mom would always play songs and that's how I would always memorize it by songs because I love songs and I always try and memorize songs so as soon as she played the song and just clapped to the beat I was like oh I know that song I know what verse you're talking about yeah yeah that's yeah that's a good way yeah all right next question what is your view on praying every day I think it's absolutely a, necess uh, a ne necessity sorry um no, yeah, praying praying is an everyday thing. Praying is something that we we always need, um, you know, and and that's not that's not just praying and reading your Bible every morning, you know. It's outside of that, you know, spending spending time with God outside of your we'll call I call that like first fruits, you know, spending time with God outside of that is absolutely important. And I think something that a lot of people may not realize is praying is not just getting on the floor and travailing. It's not just 
locking herself in a closet and praying for um for all the backsliders and whether church from church or in your family you know it's it's not just that it's praying literally just means talking to god and so what what do you do in a relationship right you talk to whoever you're in relationship with you know that's how you get closer to them is by is by getting to know them talking with them conversing and so and that's really all all it is you know just just talk to god like you would your best friend or your parents or you know your pastor whoever and and that's that's how i look at it and 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 actually it helps most of the time I, when i hear god it's mostly in kind of in my mind it's like i hear his voice in my mind and a lot of the time it's been said by many uh, men of God that the voice of God will sound a lot like your pastor. And that's something that you can use to uh, differentiate between God and a, a different voice. Because sometimes, sometimes the enemy can sound like God, but not feel like God. But I'll leave that alone. We don't have time for that. Um, but yeah, it's it's just talking to God, you know. It, wherever it it can just be in your room you can literally just be sitting on your bed and you just start talking to the lord for me it's really it's just um not just at church you know sometimes i'll be on my way to work or coming back from work and i'll just be talking to the lord or here the other day uh last friday i went up to the church and just uh just sat down in the, the office and open open the bible and just said, all right, Lord, what do you want to, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to do? You know, it's just, and another thing too, I want to, I want to say is sometimes we can get so caught up in doing all the talking. And that's, that's something that I think even, even I struggle with that a little bit, you know, it's, it, it can't be one-sided. You know, it's got to be both sides. And some sometimes you've just got to let God talk. Like, and we've all heard the stories of men and women of God that have just been woken up at 4 a.m. And God starts talking to them and they start, they're just, they're sitting in bed or they're sitting on their couch drinking some coffee or something. And God's just pouring stuff, just, just like buckets on you. And, um, you know, I think that is another important thing to go with that with prayer is remember sometimes to just be quiet and to just listen. A lot of times that can look like just meditating, just meditate in the presence of God. That's something that my pastor does quite a bit. He does pray a lot. It's a very important thing. But sometimes he'll just talk about just meditating, you know, where you just you just sit, you just close your eyes and you just sit in the presence of God and you just wait until you hear his voice that's so true I know sometimes even I have a hard time uh listening to God's because sometimes I'm like oh yeah I tell you about this and I gotta tell you about that when I should just be like okay I gotta be quiet and let you talk God so that's so true and I love how you pointed that out all right next Absolutely. question: what is your view on reading or studying the Bible <clears throat> uh kind of kind of the same I would say it's definitely a necessity, you know, even just outside of morning uh, first fruits, like I said, um, you know, because the word God is the word, you know, he, he, they're the same thing. And um, that's that's one way. I kind of think of, of spending time with God is just open up your opening up your Bible and reading a couple of chapters or studying out a verse um or a story um and in the word um the word is our spiritual bread mm -hmm. you know that's and we need to eat we need to feed ourselves and that's and that's um that's why like at church on say a midweek or a sunday uh the preacher the preach there that's the word feeding mm -hmm. us and, you know, and, and we can't, 
we can't just be fed on just that Sunday morning or that Sunday night. You know, we've got to get out and search the word for ourselves because there's so much to be found. And I can't even say that I've, I have this down yet. You know, it's, it's sometimes life gets in the way, you know, I can say for sure work, you know, everything with church. Sometimes we can get real busy um, school, even though we're just now getting out of it. So more time, but it's just, and I'll kind of go back to discipline. It's a lot about discipline. And that's something that, that's something I've come to find out is you sometimes you have to force yourself to eat <laughs> before you can actually start to enjoy it. Um, I know that that's something actually that um, one of my, one of my mentors actually um, told me, he told me that he said he kind of had to force himself to eat it, to, to read, but I was talking in a spiritual sense, but to read it first, but eventually over time, he started to enjoy it and he just started really getting into the habit himself. And I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it takes about three weeks to build a habit and then it takes like three days to break it or something along those lines. So it's not, it's not an easy thing to start up, especially if it's, you know, cause it, it probably doesn't come naturally to anybody. You know, we discipline is a huge thing that we all need. And I think that's, that's especially in that area. You know, sometimes, like I said, you have to force yourself to eat. Um, but I do think, like I said, I do think it's a necessity. You know, we need that. We need prayer. Um, we need them both just as much as we need God. That's really, that's that's one way to look at it. Um, but yeah, it's, like I said, just discipline, just set times to read the Bible or just really, if you find yourself going to play a game or to watch a movie you know take that time just try and stop and think and be like wait a minute I'm about to go do this when I could go and study mm -hmm. or I could excuse me or I could go and you know spend time with God and pray you know it's just and that's where like I said where discipline comes in you just have to and discipline's not an easy thing you know, like fasting, it's not easy. Otherwise, everyone would do it or everyone would have it. But got to do what you got to do for the necessary things, right? Mm -hmm. That's so true. And sometimes it's really hard because a lot of people are like, eh, I don't want to do that, especially in our generation. People are like, I don't want discipline. I don't want to force myself to not eat or to pray or to not look at social media because a lot of times when I'm like, wait, I have free time now. I should pray when I'm actually looking at my phone. So I'm like, okay, I should probably stop looking at my phone. So discipline is definitely one of the hardest <laughs> things out there when with our relationship with God. Cause sometimes you're like, I should be reading the Bible right now, even though I want to look at my phone. I should be praying right now, even though I want to look at my phone. All right. Next. Absolutely. What is your view on giving other people Bible studies? So I got to think about that a little bit. That's all right. I've heard it said that everybody, everybody in church, everybody saved needs to know how to teach a Bible study. Um, and I, I, I agree. I totally agree. I think that, you know, everybody should be ready just in case, because, you know, it's not, it's not just setting a time, sitting down at the, the, the dinner table and, uh, setting up your chart and everything and, and teaching somebody. Sometimes you can literally just give a Bible study by witnessing to somebody, um, you know, in the grocery store, you could just be, you could just be in the produce aisle and you're just, uh, you find somebody, you start, you strike, a, strike up a conversation with them, start talking about God, and then all of a sudden you find yourself giving a Bible study. You know, I think that, I think that it, it'd be a good thing for everybody to be ready, 
you know, in season and out of season uh, to teach your Bible study. Um, one that I actually taught was uh, my best friend. He, he's been in church for most of his life, but um, I talked to him about it because I, you know, he, for a while, he was pretty quiet into himself. Um, but he didn't really, you know, he, he was there for everything, you know, preaching and worship and all that, but talking to him, you know, he didn't, I don't think he really understood a lot of what's in the Bible and what's behind it and everything. So I, I started teaching him Bible studies. I think it was every Tuesday at three o'clock. Yeah. Three o'clock on Tuesdays. And that's kind of where that started for me. Um, he was, he was the only one I really taught a Bible study. Um, but like I said, I think, I think it'd be good for us all to be ready in, um, like I said, in and out of season, whenever we're needed, uh, just to be ready. Um, yeah, it's like, like I said, it's, it can even just be through witnessing to somebody. It doesn't have to be a certain setting. Um, Oh, uh, I had another idea. Right. Okay. Got it. Um, I did actually also teach a lesson over the pulpit. It doesn't have to be over the pulpit. I know that scares a lot of people. It scares me. Um, but I, I taught out of, oh man, what was it? I think it was exploring God's word. I, I did. I did just one lesson on it. Absolutely terrifying. But sometimes, sometimes it's like that, too. You have to be ready for pulpit, uh, which is not always easy. But that will especially take a lot of prayer and studying. Um, but, yeah, just really, just really simple. Just, I think, just be ready for whenever you need. You need to teach anybody or just be ready, really, to witness to anybody. Just to go along with that. Just, just be ready. That's so true because anybody could just randomly ask you a question out of nowhere because I remember once I had a friend who came up to me and they were like, I'm an atheist. Tell me proof that God exists. And I was like, oh boy. I was like, how am I going to do this? I'm like, give me a day and I will get a paper and I will write up some things that I find and I'll give it to you because I was not ready for that. So we definitely need to be ready for a lot of questions that just randomly come out. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think that that's where praying and studying can really tie in with that because, you know, if you don't, like you said, you know, how do you prove to an atheist that God exists? You know, we, it's about, it's especially a little more difficult if you were raised in it your whole life, you know, cause it's just built into your brain. Um, but that's, like I said, that's kind of where I think praying and studying would tie in with that is because, you know, you search out, in the word where God, where does it say that you where, where's proof that you exist? Because it's all in there. You just need to find it. And then, you know, who doesn't need prayer? <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah. It, it could be, it could be scary. I definitely know that, you know, teaching Bible studies, it can be a little intimidating at first. So lots of prayer and lots of studying. I remember my first one and I was definitely like, oh boy, am I going to mess this one up? Because you always feel like you're going to mess it up. Yeah, for sure. Like I'm going to teach false doctrine on accident. Oopsie. But then you're going to be okay. God's got you back. You don't have to worry. Absolutely. All right. Next question. What is your view on spiritual warfare? Oh. <sighs> I think, I think there's a time and a place for it. You know, I can, I know a lot of people that may even see this will, will know that we've had to engage in some things at some camps and some HYCs. And like I said, time and place. Um, but I don't think it's something that you should do all the time or something you should be looking for. Um, actually just yesterday in church, um, it was it was talked about in service about um, not 
engaging everything that you see you know we could call that a, a witch hunter or a demon hunter mm-hmm. um don't don't go and look for things don't go looking for for demons or just whatever you can find don't go looking for you know demon possessed people you know if if it comes to you if, if something comes up against you yes sometimes you may have to engage but that like i said time and place don't go looking for things because you'll mess yourself up bad and that's that's not even coming from me that's that's from multiple men of god that i've i've heard stories about um my uncle actually who was talking about that yesterday he said that he went out and looked for a spirit he was just looking for things and he engaged in a fight with a spirit that he didn't have authority over and he messed himself up and he said it's he said it took him years to recover years so if you're not careful you can really mess yourself up and it and there could be so many ways that you could be messed up but like i said that's time and place mm-hmm. you know like don't be a demon hunter don't go out looking for stuff but if it comes up against you you know that's and that's why we have pastors that's that's at least one reason why we have pastors pastors are covering and so you have out of submission you have access to their authority meaning that you know you you walk in their authority as well because you're submitted to them and um you know in the bible a lot of times we're we're likened you know saints we're likened to sheep and sheep have shepherds which in this case we could say is a pastor and the the shepherd uh the the smell of sheep will always be on the shepherd and that's how you really know if that's a a true shepherd you could say a pastor um and then of course you know sheep will always be close to the shepherd and they'll they'll act like their their shepherd or the well sheep can't really act like their shepherd but i know that whenever i'm around my pastor a lot of times i'll find myself just acting in the way he does you know cuz he's very gentle and very just calm and relaxed uh sometimes i find myself just very relaxed and almost just kind of acting like he like him mm-hmm. you know just just from spending time with my pastor um right getting back to spiritual warfare mm-hmm. um yeah like i said time and place don't engage in everything but you know that's another thing pray and study you know prepare yourself um because sometimes sometimes your your prayer is not just talking to god on say like a wednesday and you find yourself having to engage in spiritual warfare um but yeah like i said just time and place and don't don't go looking for things but but do be ready for whenever that time comes that's so true and you just got to be ready for the right time because you got to know when you need to be in spiritual warfare. You also got to know when not to be because sometimes you don't need to be in spiritual warfare. Sometimes you just need to leave it be and let God handle it. Absolutely. All right. Next question. Okay. Um, what are good ways to reach today's world? What are some good ways to reach the saved world? Oh, good ways to save. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. Um, there, there's a lot of ways. I think one of probably one of the most common things that we've all heard, you know, doing mission trips or just really in our our local churches, is um, hanging. See, I think yes, I think I was talking about one of the most common ways that we we're familiar with outreach um hanging hanging something on doorknobs or uh handing out flyers you know, a lot of times like on mission trips or just in our local churches we'll have to we've had to do those things um and i think that's good absolutely um but some some things i'm kind of thinking about like 
like just a 15 year old who wants to reach their their world you mm -hmm. know what are some ways they could do that um one thing that came to mind is social media mm -hmm. if if this 15 year old has a phone or just access to social media um you know you could you could maybe just do a one minute or so encouragement and upload it you know you could do something like that you could post things daily just encourage encouragement you know because you never know who could be seeing that and that could be exactly what they need to hear and that could be the gateway into salvation for them and to being saved you know to church god everything mm -hmm. um and i think that that p7 club actually is also a really good a really good thing not that's definitely not an easy thing to do i'm mm -hmm. sure it takes a lot of work um you know and and even bible studies you know it my uh <clears throat> my grandpa um some of you may know him as um oh man what is it elder brother bagwell or bishop bishop bagwell whatever the case you may know him as that he um he's talked about um about uh salvation before and how to reach how to reach the world and one thing that he said that's kind of always stuck with me is uh win them to you first and then show them Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't just, don't just go up to somebody and say, Hey, can I talk to you about Jesus? You know, strike up a conversation, you know, try and find something, a little common ground, because if you can find something that you have in common with them, something that, you know, both interest you, you'll, you'll have a good starting point to be friends. And then if you, like 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 he said you know if you win them to you mm -hmm. that could then you can show them jesus you know don't just don't just right off the bat you know try and teach them about bible study and all that you got to win them to you first mm -hmm. and um i think there there's there honestly i think there's so many ways you could do that you know like i said you know bible study maybe some encouragements on social media p7 club excuse me um, and then, you know, like, you know, kind of like I said earlier, just being ready in season and out of season, you know, to teach a Bible study or to witness to somebody, you know, um, and don't, and don't stress too much about like, if you've never done that before, I know that can be very nerve wracking and stressful, but everybody's going to start somewhere. You know, everybody, everybody's got to do it for their first time. So, you know, to anybody watching, you know, don't stress about it. Just, you know, I, what I'd probably do is I'd just pray, you know, like I definitely pray a lot, you know, I'd be like, Lord, just help me, you know, to say what you want me to say and, uh, let your will be done mm -hmm. and just, all right, let's do it. And I just, I just go, you know, I do. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there's there's probably a lot more ways you could reach the world, but just for the sake of time and uh, just to list a few, uh, I think those those could be some some good starters. That's so true. Like posting encouragement, saying you guys got this, you can do it. It will definitely maybe boost up someone's day, or maybe posting Bible verses or short videos. Because I've seen um some short videos on Instagram where people speak about verses and stuff, and also the fact you put it out. Don't just go up to people and be like, "Hey, have you heard about my Jesus?" Because some people will be freaked yeah. out by that because they'll be like. I don't want to talk to you. You sound scary because you're just bringing up Jesus right away. You become friends, then you end up getting, you get that relationship. You got that book down. They like you. You talk about them. You remember something that they told you. Maybe they talk about their favorite art class they did. I don't know, something they like doing or video games, for example, because you like video games. Maybe you meet somebody else who likes video games and you make common ground on there. And then eventually they know something different about you. Then they're like, there's something different about you. I want to learn more. What do you have that I don't have? 
So those yeah, are absolutely. absolutely. Anything else you want to add? No, ma'am. All right. Next question. What would you say stops teenagers in our generation from getting close to Jesus? And how can we fix this problem? <clears throat> um, really, the I think the first thing that comes to mind is distraction. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably one of the more obvious ones. Um, yeah, phones. That's If it's one word, it's phones, you know. And then if it's two, probably social media. Um, but like like I said, I, I definitely have struggled with social media, entertainment, addiction, all that. Absolutely. Everybody, everybody at some point in their life will struggle with that. Uh, unfortunately, but it's just that's just the way it is. Um, but you know, it's it's so easy to get distracted. You know when. Like if you're trying to, if you're trying to spend some time with God, say, or or pray, and you know your phone keeps blowing up, or like you know, I'll I'll say this: this might some guys out there, you know, the notification pops up, the the Nuggets are playing the Lakers. I know I know that's not in the playoffs, but um, and that that can that can grab your attention, and be like, ooh, I'm gonna go do that. And sometimes, you know, sometimes we can get carried away and we get distracted and we get off track. But that's just that unfor like I said, unfortunately, that's just something we all have to deal with. And that's and that's kind of where I'll bring this back, something uh d discipline. Mm -hmm. Um, that's kind of where discipline comes in. You have to really force yourself to stay on track and to stay on path. And, you know, something that some things you could do, you know, to kind of help mitigate that distraction is turn your ringer off or turn on do not disturb or put your phone in an entirely different room and then go into a different room where your phone is not in. Or, you know, if you can drive, maybe drive into the church and, you know, still leave your phone on silent and just, you know, kind of set it in your mind like I'm not going to check my phone i'm not gonna this is completely god's time i'm sitting down with him however long he wants to go for that's what we'll do and it's it's a lot mentally that's something i've come to find out and that's something i've heard a lot it's just a lot about what you do in your mind discipline has a lot to do with your mindset mm -hmm. and so if it's if you're trying something and it's not working maybe what you need is to change your mindset and however that works for you however that goes but sometimes that's what's necessary to to get rid of distractions but i think i think that's definitely something that stops us unfortunately and i will say probably another thing uh fear of failure mm -hmm. um i know that's probably feel like I'm hitting a little close to home there. Um, I understand. I totally understand. Fear of failure. You want to do it right. You want to make, you know, you want to make God proud. You want to make everybody proud. You want to just, you want to look like you're doing it right. You know, everything, all that. You don't want to do it wrong. Nobody mm -hmm. does. Um, But that's, and and to go with that, something that I think we, all should have or just something that something that you should always be is a teachable spirit mm -hmm. you know whenever you mess up because i mean let's be honest who who really likes to mess up who, who likes to make mistakes nobody i hate messing up and i'm a perfectionist so it's worse for me but i've had to learn that i'm actually grateful for when i mess up and make mistakes as hard as that is to say but it's important to make mistakes so that you will learn I'm not saying mess up on purpose but when you do mess up that's your learning point and that's where you and that's where the teachable spirit part comes in be teachable so that whenever you make a mistake um say your your parent or your pastor can teach you a lesson or, or teach you something a, an aspect of life or a spiritual aspect 
and you just you pick it up you learn from your mistake and you move on and now now you're a little more built up and now you're better moving forward so I understand the fear of failure but that's something that you know, I'm sure with time goes away and that's something that, you know, like distraction, just, just do, just, just get rid of it. You know, sometimes it may, it may take prayer or it may take maybe some counseling with your pastor or just a few conversations with your parents. Um, but yeah, I would say distraction, fear of failure, um, and sometimes even just waiting. Mm -hmm. Waiting's not a bad thing, but we can get, unfortunately, we can get so caught up in waiting for, I think I touched on this earlier, we can get so caught up on waiting for a call to ministry, like a, a call to preach, a call to teach or to, you know, join the praise team. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, like I said earlier, don't don't wait on a call. You know, it, it will come eventually. You will, uh, you know, many are called if you're chosen. Mm -hmm. um, but just jump in, you know, don't don't wait on anything. Just get right into ministry. Ask your pastor, you know, what are some things I can do? And is, is there anything I can do to help you even? You know, that, I think that's something that is especially important ask you know if, if there's if there's nothing you can do really in church ask your pastor if there's something you can do to serve him mm -hmm. you know that could look like mowing his lawn or maybe in the winter time clearing off his driveway or going and cleaning their house if you know if he lets you um or helping out say i'll say for the ladies you know helping out your pastor's wife you know making sure she's taken care of um Maybe if she's got some, some younger kids, try and babysit, you know, just some, things like that. I think that along with ministry, serving your pastor is also incredibly important. Like, honestly, to the point where, like, I, if I, if I had to choose, I would serve my pastor. Mm -hmm. And I would... You know, not to say that I don't enjoy playing piano and all that. I do. But if I had to choose, I would I would rather serve mm -hmm. because there's and it's there's there's things that come with serving. There's blessings and there's um, there, there's certain things that you get access to just by serving that you don't get with others. You know, you can even just in serving your pastor or let's say let's say cadetting for him. You know, carrying his water, carrying his Bible and, you know, taking it up onto the platform for him or just to his seat or, you know, making sure he's taken care of, get him a Coke, get him a, a Dr. Pepper, you know, a snack, you know, anything. Just serving your pastor. There's things that you get. There's there's blessings because God sees it. God sees you serving and he sees your willingness and he blesses it. And it's it's not, yes, you want to be blessed, but you want to serve because you want, because you love your pastor and because you want to serve him. But I, th I think that's, that's another thing you can do outside of, you know, just ministry in church or um, just, you know, as far as jumping in to ministry, because uh, that can still be ministry. Um here at uh at AOF actually that um in planning center we have that actually laid out like who's cadetting for my dad and who's cadetting for my mom and it'll be <clears throat> it'll be so and so or it'll be like you know mm -hmm. this person um but yeah going back to that just to waiting I think that's another thing unfortunately that we deal with and um it, and like I said, that all ties back to discipline. It's just making yourself get up out of your seat and going and just doing something. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. I've said that pretty much throughout this call or else everybody would be good at it. Everybody would do it. But it's necessary because the time 
that we live in now, we can't afford to wait anymore. We can't afford to just sit back and wait for a call. This is exactly the time, and I'm sure we've all heard this multiple times, but we're hearing it so much because it's here, because it's getting closer. You know, end time is here. Revival is everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's things to be done. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually, I do want to explain um, if anybody is wondering why serving your pastor is so important. Well, your pastor, you know, he leads the church. He's the spiritual covering for the church. He's a spiritual covering for all the people in his church. And that's, um, there's things that he needs to do, you know, like, like I will say preaching. Mm -hmm. My dad has talked about that before, just preaching for 45 minutes. It's actually a scientific study, I believe was done on that. And 45 minutes of preaching is equivalent to like, I want to say eight hours of work, like stress on your body. And so whenever, whenever someone preaches, it's like they're, they're literally like their whole body is just going through like that. If, if that makes sense, like that, like they're working like in physically and I could be wrong on that, but it's something along those lines. Um, and so that, you know, whenever your pastor preaches, you know, they'll probably be pretty exhausted after that. They'll want to go out to eat or, you know, go home and rest. And there's things that, you know, like loading up their, their, uh, their bag or their, their Bible into the car. There's, there's just little things like that, that, you know, you just, you just want to take care of for them so that they can, they can do what God's called them to do. And you can, you can just help them because they need to preserve their strength as much as possible. Um, and so I think that's, that is just one reason why it's so important. And, you know, you also just, just out of willingness, you know, just wanting to serve just out of love for your pastor. But that's, I think that's really why it's important to serve your pastor and your first lady is to make sure that they can do what they need to do. And those little things, you can take care of those little things so that they can focus on the other, the really big things that they need to do, like, you know, pastoring, you know, counseling, anything like that. But, yeah, distraction, fear of, uh, fear of failure, and just waiting. I think, I think those are all... You know, and there's probably a lot of other things, but for the sake of time, I'll just keep it down to those, those yeah. three. Um, yeah, but those, I hope that kind of, I hope that kind of helps answer that question. I know I kind of went on a lot, but hope that answers it. That does. And I like how you pointed out all those things, fear of failure, because I know a lot of people in our generation are like, I don't want to do it because I'm going to fail. You got God. So what do you have to fear? He's bigger than the boogeyman because uh, I don't know if you watched Ver Veggie right. Tales when you were a kid. Yeah, you yeah, did. absolutely. Um, but it talked a lot about how God's bigger than the boogeyman. So why do you have to fear? Because as a child, you're always scared of the boogeyman coming after you underneath your bed or whatever. Yeah. So if you think of the boogeyman and that God's bigger than the boogeyman. So you know you're safe. Yeah. No, no. Hey, it's still pretty true today. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Stop God. That's right. Last question. Any advice you'd like to share with any everyone watching today? To anybody out there watching, whether you're watching now, you know, whenever this is posted, or if you're watching it, just whenever you're watching it. Um, I the way I speak about everything today I, I just I hope that I've helped somebody um and I hope that it all makes sense um but like I said you know it's it's time it's time for us to just jump in it's time to get in it's time to to jump into ministry it's time to just jump into the deep end it's 
it's time. There's, like I said before, it's end time. There's revival everywhere. There's so many things to be done. There's so many people to reach in this world. Yes. But don't just look at the entire world, you know, look at your city first. You know, there's so many people just in our cities that we have to reach. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I would say, just discipline. That's really something that has come up a lot in what I've talked about. It's not easy, mm -hmm. but it's what needs to be done. And I just, I pray that, I pray that we all, whoever watches this, takes this and, and just applies it, you know, runs with it and don't give up. I feel that. I kind of feel that in the Holy Ghost. Don't, don't give up. Just mm -hmm. keep moving forward. You know, whether you're waiting to take your first step, you've taken your first few steps and you don't know where to go trust in the lord you know and just keep moving forward mm -hmm. that's some that's a, that's even to me you know i have to keep moving forward and everything will fall into place so that's if that's if there's anything to be taken away um discipline and just keep moving forward mm -hmm. don't so give up yeah don't give up because the worst thing you could ever do in your life is be like okay i'm done i'll quit because that's just the worst thing. That's if you want to disappoint people, that's how you will disappoint people, giving up. Absolutely. And everything you said today is so true and so vital. And I believe it's, if it doesn't speak to everyone watching, at least it will speak to one person. Amen. That's what's important. That just one person gets changed. Amen. All right. Can you end us in prayer, please? Absolutely. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this time we've had, this, this time in your presence, this time of your word. I pray that you will bless what has happened here today. Bless these words. God, it's not my words, but it's your words. I pray that you'll bless them, and I pray that you'll send them to go to wherever they need to, to be, whoever they need to go to. And I pray that whoever sees this recording or Whoever sees this, God, they will they will take this and they'll they'll ponder and they'll think what what can be done, what can I do better, what can I do to reach this world, what can I do to reach my city, what can I do to reach my school? And I pray that I pray that your will has be done, uh, has been done, and I pray that you'll go with all of us, Lord, everyone who sees this, everyone who comes across this recording. I pray that you'll be with everyone, Lord, like I said, that has come across this recording. And I pray that you will help us, help us to take this and to apply it to our lives, Jesus. And I pray, I pray that you'll help us as we reach this world. And bless this day, Lord, wherever, wherever the day goes, wherever we all go, be with us. We love you and we thank you. We give you all the glory, the honor and praise in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. It's been a great time. See you at camp. Absolutely. Bye, Bye everybody. God bless.